Hey YouTube, David's Tables. Thanks for tuning in. And today we're going to answer the question, what is a ping flood? And I'm going to show you exactly how that works. And we're going to do that right now. So again, thanks for tuning in. So over the last few weeks, I've had a few students ask, so what exactly is a ping flood? So I figured, you know what, there's probably a lot of people out there who are curious as to what exactly a ping flood is and figured I would actually go through and show you guys what it is and how it works and what the commands are to actually run a ping flood. Uh, so I've got my Mac here and so I've got a Windows 10 virtual machine running on it uh, and you can see the CPU usage of course right now is very very little same thing with disk and network uh, so really there's not a whole lot going on on this machine at the moment. Uh, now I've also got a couple of terminal windows over here ready to go uh, so, but before I do that, let's go ahead and find out the IP address here, just to make sure that it hasn't changed. Uh, so if I run a quick IP config, it shows me that my internal IP address is 172.16.237.167. Now, I'm running this on a virtual machine instead of another computer because I'm in a hotel room, and I really don't want to be using the hotel's Wi-Fi network to run a ping flood over it, possibly adversely affecting their network here and the other users on it. Uh, so I'm doing everything basically internally here, but all the concepts are just the same. If I was doing this against an external server, or if I was doing this against another computer on my network, uh, this all works just the same. So I know that my target IP address is going to be this 172.16.237.167, uh, which I'm going to leave down here. Uh, you'll notice that when I, can, when I run a standard ping, if I do say ping... Uh, we said that was 172.16.237.167. You'll notice that, of course, on a Mac, it's the same thing as Linux and Unix, where it will do a continuous ping, but it's only really sending one packet per second, right? And it shows us the results of that pretty much immediately. Well, a ping flood, on the other hand, is essentially where we're sending as many packets as we possibly can, as quickly as we can, uh, so that it, we're basically trying to fill up that network pipe, trying to fill up the CPU usage. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually run a flood on this instead. You can see that the ping really had uh, no effect whatsoever here. So if I say ping-f uh, 172.16.237.167, you'll notice that I should actually get an error message here because it does actually need administrative permissions to do that. Uh, so you can see here where it says the dash F flag, the operation is not permitted. Uh, so obviously I need to go ahead and add in the administrative permissions. So just like we do on Linux and Unix, I do that by using the sudo command. So I'll say sudo uh, ping dash F and then the host that I want to target here, which is going to be 172.16.237.167. And now you'll notice that instead of actually showing me the results for every single ping, it's only really going to show me whenever that operation fails, whenever it actually times out. Uh, so you'll notice that these packet numbers, when it does drop a couple, are actually rather high. So at this point, I've already sent over 30,000 pings, 50,000 pings and more uh, to this host over here. And you can actually see and watch this CPU usage kind of spike up as this flood starts. So I'm just going to let this run for a moment and let you see exactly where that's at. It uh, looks like right now we're taking up roughly about 40 to 50 percent of the CPU. Uh, and of course, I've only got one core dedicated to this virtual machine at the moment. Uh, if I come back over here into Performance Monitor, you can see it's still barely even hitting the network card here. Um, but of course, the CPU usage is kind of spiking up to roughly about 100 percent here and there. Uh, so that should probably kind of slow down the machine a little bit. But if I really want to hit it kind of hard, if I had a second machine over here, I could actually run this ping flood from that second machine. Uh, but of course, since I'm still kind of spiking down to the 50% levels or so, I'm just going to go ahead and open up another terminal window and run a ping flood from it as well and just see if we can even spike that higher here. So I'm going to run another sudo ping-f and we said that was 172.16.237.167 and now we should actually notice, type in my password here, that of course now it's really pegging out that CPU and of course now I'm having a lot of timeouts here uh, because obviously I can't really send these packets fast enough so if this computer over here uh, this virtual machine was a real computer and it was going to try and be responding to anything uh, I have pretty much pegged out its CPU so it can't really do a whole lot right now right 
Uh, of course, if it had multiple cores, it would be able to respond to this a little bit better. Uh, it would be able to handle this extra traffic. But remember, every time these pings come in, it basically has to process that ping and send it back. Uh, now, of course, I can do things like turn off the ICMP echo request and reply. Uh, I do have the firewall disabled on this for this demonstration. Uh, but of course, the ICMP protocol is what our pings use. And as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of packets failing here now. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and cancel one of these just so we can see uh, what the results look like. Uh, you'll notice over here that I've got a lot fewer packets actually failing now. And there's some sort of a, an alert going off on my phone. Um, so there's, uh, you know, obviously with the 152,000 packets that I transmitted, I received 76,226. I know I had a pretty large packet loss number just because I had uh, run two at the same time. Uh, otherwise, you know, it might be totally different numbers. Uh, and as you can see, even with this other ping flood still going, uh, I am actually still using a significant amount of that CPU, just about pegging it out at 100% all the time. So anyhow, uh, this is exactly how a ping flood works, uh, what it does. Uh, the dash F flag is not available on Windows from what I've seen, so you do need a Linux or Unix system or some sort of a, sort of a third-party tool to actually do a ping flood on Windows. Uh, I hope you found this video informative, perhaps useful in your studying for whether it's a CCNA or a CompTIA Security Plus, CompTIA Network Plus, or the A Plus. I know we talk about the uh, ping floods in there as well, and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And if you're looking for any sort of training, again, whether it's for one of the CompTIA classes or Microsoft or Cisco, uh, I do teach a variety of different classes. Be happy to uh, talk to you about setting up a class at your location, on site, uh, wherever you're at, or you can come see me in Atlanta. Be sure to click on that subscribe button for me as well. Uh, click on the like, and I will certainly see you in a future video. Until then, you guys take care.